Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of Fantasy6Pack.net and joining me shortly will be Kevin Poe, also of Fantasy6Pack.net. Jonathan Chan is off this week, so it's just Kevin and me uh, going through the games and uh, a thriller in San Francisco uh, at Levi Stadium. Huge victory for the Seahawks in overtime. Uh, if you didn't see the game, you missed a uh, one of those defensive battles that was actually a very good game, uh, quite quite thrilling. The the uh, San Francisco 49ers uh, came out with full strength, but after the loss, I mean, they were playing without Kittle anyway, and then they lost Emmanuel Sanders, and from there on, it just seemed Garoppolo just didn't have didn't have any kind of rhythm. He didn't he didn't find any rhythm with any other receiver. It seems like. Uh, uh, the game was uh, offensively for the 49ers, sort of like got all, all muddled up. Um, they sort of just patched things together. Uh, Kev, I know you didn't see much of the game, but man, you if you didn't see much of the game or any of the game, it's uh, you missed a good one. You'll have to you'll have to see the highlights and and uh, some uh, pretty good efforts by uh, uh, Jadavian Clowney, especially on defense for Seattle. Both sides of the ball, great defensive game. You know, you don't often say uh, a defensive game is a, an exciting game, but. Uh, this is a different kind of uh, defensive game. This is a de- uh, this was just uh, from beginning to end your proper good hard nosed football game. Um, uh, Chris Carson still uh, put in some good yardage, scored a touchdown. Uh, not too good for the uh, San Francisco running backs. Of course, the Seahawks were preparing to uh, were prepared to uh, stop that running game, and perhaps it helped quite a bit. Uh, How's it going, Kev? Are you ready uh, to uh... <laughs> Yes, I missed out on on a on finally a good Monday night football game. Seems like they've all been pretty crummy up until this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Catch the highlights or, or whatever you do. Uh, don't or watch uh, some kind of uh, uh, if you've got Game Pass, watch uh, watch uh, the game in uh, in a cut down mode. The uh, you can watch a game in forty minutes or so. Yeah, it was pretty thrilling. Uh, not not a great offensive outing for um, Russell Wilson, but uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, it wasn't that type of game. It was the type of game that we sort of expected. Um, both both defenses having to come out, but uh, Garoppolo definitely definitely hampered by the loss of uh, Emmanuel Sanders and. We saw Josh Gordon, Josh Gordon, two receptions, and they were clutch receptions, big important receptions uh, at the uh, at the end of the game to help the Seahawks uh, secure the victory. So now um, Tyler Lockett is questionable, so we might be seeing a little bit more of Josh Gordon. Um, I had my doubts about him, and uh, but uh, I don't know what else to say about this game, but a, a real thrilling game, Seahawks. Yeah, I mean- uh, I guess I can interject and say it's not surprising that Josh Gordon is uh, was successful making winning plays Super Bowl champion. Never <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. And guess what? I unceremoniously dropped him in our league because I um, I impulsively wanted to uh, grab a hold of a couple of uh, Chiefs um, uh, running backs because of something that we're going to talk about a little bit later about the Chiefs and what's going on with that backfield. But uh, pretty much covered up the covered the uh, Seattle game. Uh, again, if you started, you're happy if you started um, Chris Carson, basically. And Kev, Jacob Hollister, uh, eight catches, 60-odd yards, touchdown. Um, I think he's the waiver wire guy uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I think uh, two weeks ago he had a pretty good game for the Seahawks, and you kind of talked about him as someone who's someone to keep an eye on. And uh, it's kind of, I mean, if you didn't pick him up then, you're you're going to have to get him now because um, I don't know what can I say. He's just good. The Seattle offense seemingly uses these uh, this type of player. I mean, whether it's him or Will Disley. I mean, Disley wasn't some kind of outrageous talent either. So um, I don't know. Two weeks in a row. I'm, I'm sorry, but not even two weeks. Uh, not even two weeks ago. Last week against Tampa, he had four catches for. The 37 yards and two touchdowns so there's definitely a role for him there uh, that's been vacated by Will Disley's injury um, and I mean with the state of the tight end as bad as it is you could do worse yeah the only problem is is that uh, if you do pick up uh, Jacob Hollister uh, the Seahawks are on a bye next week so you'll have to wait till week 12 to use them so that's the only uh, the only thing you don't get to plug them in right away so um, not much other news let's get into the uh, games of the weekend and uh, we'll start with the Thursday night game the uh, 
Chargers at Raiders in their uh, old-fashioned floodlights. Uh, I think it's the the last last uh, game for uh, the last night game that they're gonna have at, at Oakland for uh, in in the multi. What do they call it? A multi uh, multi-purpose field because they play baseball. They're the last one. So. Um, multi-purpose field sounds right. Multi multiplex. No, that's not right. No, I think it's multi I think they call it multi-purpose mm-hmm. field. They're the last. Uh, they're the last one. Um, I'm always whenever they show a night game at, at Oakland, I always notice that there's a lot of dark shadows and everything. It's always it doesn't have that lit up look like and bright of other stadiums around the NFL. Yeah. Well, as someone who's been there, uh, good riddance. It is it is a it's just a shithole. It's really like one of the worst buildings I've ever been in. I can't I can't really pan it enough. It's super old. It's super decrepit. Nothing nothing looks modern inside there. Um, yeah, you were telling me about the toilets are like the urinals are like a, like a trough. Yeah, they're like horse troughs. It's it's crazy. So uh, you see you see those around those uh, you do see those around at some old bars and stuff, but uh, but generally uh, yeah it it does have that look, and I can see what you mean. It's uh, it's about time to pack it in for the old. What a Alca, call it Alameda Field? What are, what's it called? Uh, Philip Rivers, uh, terrible game. Uh, nothing really happened. Um, Melvin Melvin Gordon, uh, twenty two carries, one hundred eight yards. Um, Keenan Allen came to a bit of life, but uh, generally speaking, still still a disappointment. Kev Keenan Allen. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what's going to break him out of this funk. If the Raiders uh, a matchup with the Raiders couldn't. Uh, that being said, Philip Rivers was awful, so it's not necessarily Allen's fault. I think he did pretty well with what he gave it. Uh, if you looked at Rivers' stats, they're pretty bad through interceptions, but I think the game tape is even worse. I watched a little bit of this game, and Rivers was just airmailing passes left and right. Yeah, uh, he, he wasn't, uh, he's, he's just not accurate anymore. He doesn't have that same gunslinger uh, thing that he had previ- in early part of his career. I think age is starting to catch up with some of these, uh, some of our old classic quarterbacks of the, I think we're, we're moving into a new era. We've already yeah. seen. I mean, we, yeah, you've got you've got him slowing down. Roethlisberger continually getting banged up. Eli's done. Dalton. Yep. So that moves us. That takes us right oh, into our next game. <laughs> I wouldn't put Dalton in that category. That's a little <laughs> bit insulting to those three guys. <laughs> well, I know, but uh, but the bottom line is is that he's one of the oldies, right? So yeah, sure. Um, Blacko. Speaking of Cincinnati, which he was benched for, uh, Ryan Finley, uh, not a good outing for the kid. Uh, um, 30 attempts, 16 <laughs> receptions, 167 yards. One interception, he got his first NFL touchdown in the game, but uh, Baltimore just blew the doors off the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, it's just a total disaster. And Lamar Jackson, the spin move has been all over uh, Twitter. I mean, if you're not sick of that spin move by now, I don't know if I ever get sick of it. It was such a, a fantastic little spin move he made on the on the Cincinnati defender to go in for the TD. Yeah, I've watched it like 36 times by now, and every single time it surprises me how fast. Mm. But it's just ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> on the good side of the the Bengals, though, Kev. Uh, Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon actually did something. Thirty. Well, it took thirty carries to get him over a hundred yards, but um, at least he he made fantasy. If if he's startable anymore, if anybody bothered to start him. In fact, I was going through some uh, some twitters of 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 people like, uh, "What mistakes did you make uh, in in week 10? And a lot of people were saying not starting Joe Mixon, which yeah, is under- I mean, who <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's understandable, but who would have thought that Ryan Finley coming out, the downgrade from Dalton to Ryan Finley actually unlocked Mixon just because of the sheer volume, 30 touches, 114 yards, and absolutely no scoring potential, really, but um, that's what you want, is you do want that volume. And, um, hopefully, he'll keep getting that volume going forward. I mean, with Gio Bernard going out, I think he'll definitely have that opportunity. Yeah, uh, Gio Bernard, of course, was, was out and uh, lost yards and a fumble, uh, so it was a bad, uh, bad scene for... Uh, Bad scene for him. New Orleans. Uh, well, they kind of had their Green Bay Packers moment of last week uh, against the Chargers. So Atlanta decided to show up, and uh, well, of course, uh, the, the Falcons always play the the Saints pretty tough. Um, they come uh, with decided to you know mount a pass rush on uh, Drew Brees, and it worked. They defeated the um, the Saints twenty six to nine. Um, still, not a lot of great fantasy numbers for um, for, uh, for Atlanta. And uh, kind of Julio Jones still sort of missing in action, Kev. Yeah. 
just a strange game all around. Um, probably destroyed a lot of people's uh, survivor leagues. Um, you know, you just, I guess it's, it's one of those things where it's like inter division play is always competitive, but even so for the game to go like this, Drew Brees couldn't get anything going, which was, it was absurd. He threw 45 times and only had, he still had, he didn't have any touchdowns, had less than 300, um, passing yards. Somehow Atlanta was able to run the ball a ton on the, on the Saints, which I guess took the Saints out of their offense. It was just a strange game overall. And, uh, I'm not really sure what to make. Yeah, I, although uh, Michael Thomas still did okay uh, for fantasy. Um, he got 152 yeah. yards. Thomas apparently is just quarterback proof. The one guy who worries me actually is Kamara. Um, it just didn't really look like he was as involved in the offense as you know we kind of thought he should. Maybe he's still kind of working his way back from injury, but four four rushes for 24 yards. Uh, I get that he had eight receptions, but four rushes for 28 yards just isn't good. Do you think we'll see start seeing more of a timeshare with uh, Latavius Murray now? No, I I think it's gonna go back the other way. I think if if anything, this is a, you know a wake up call for the for the Saints. Like, hey, we need Kamara to win games. You know, we're a different offense than Kamara and. I mean, honestly, they've got Tampa next on their schedule, so uh, that's not really a Latavius Murray game. Tampa is good against running backs, so they're going to throw the ball a ton to Kamara. So he's going to get on the he's going to get back on the right track next week. But it was really interesting how the uh, our next game is uh, Arizona twenty seven at uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, this game, well, uh, and and I refer back to those the tweets of uh, a lot of people saying that they didn't start Christian Kirk and Christian Kirk of course have had a, had a had a massive game uh touchdown wise uh, I'll just get his, uh, his actual stats up for this game uh it is uh, uh six receptions on 10 targets for 138 yards and three touchdowns did very very well obviously and of course a lot of people were complaining that they didn't start him <laughs> terrible mistake it's a terrible mistake but i mean well if you've got better if if you had better options it just didn't seem like the kind of game that you'd you'd want to start oh, i completely disagree i think tampa is one of those teams that you absolutely need to roll out your wide receivers get everything they're yeah. the exact perfect recipe for wide receivers going on. they have no cornerbacks they're uh they're elite against the run their offense will keep you in a shootout type situation uh but their cornerbacks and secondary just suck so if you look at the Tampa Bay Bucks, like the points given up to wide receivers over the last couple of weeks is absolutely atrocious. I could pull it up, but I mean, I think just looking at Christian Kirk's week, I think you kind of get my. Point. Yeah, I do. Uh, but but for the Tampa Bay Bucks, OJ Howard got a touchdown. He did, they actually used him, Kev. They used him. They decided to use. Hey, let's get let's use the let's use OJ Howard this week. Do you think it continues, or is it hit and hope still? Um, yeah, I mean, seven targets, four catches, four catches on seven targets for 47 yards on the touchdown. It's not exactly a breakout game or anything like that. We no. also have to consider that the Cardinals coming into this week have given them the most fantasy points to tight ends. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a chicken or egg thing with me. I'm not really trusting OJ Howard if I don't have to, um, cause that offense is as far as passing is always going to be Evan Godwin first. Yeah. Completely agree there. Uh, I, I just don't, I think it's still wait and see, but from what we've seen to this point, uh, I think it's going to be him or break. It just depends on the weather. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those, as it's been with uh, tight ends all season long for the ones that are down the list. Uh, you know, it's sort of like take your pick, or, you know, it's a roulette wheel thing, which is making tight ends in fantasy. Mm, a lot of people critical about tight ends in fantasy, and I'm starting to see why. Well, I'm not starting. I, mean, I've, I think we've all known it for a long time that tight ends, well, especially in a season such as this, uh, <clears throat> it's, you know, there's, there's no, there's no certainty. There's no consistency, not even with like Ertz. Ertz isn't even trustable anymore. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's bad week to week. I mean, that's why I thought Scott Fishbowl was super interesting giving the tight end. I'm a big fan of that actually. You like that? Yeah, I do. I mean, it just makes a couple more players a little more startable. Uh, you're not really yeah. scrounging at tight end. You know, like I'm okay starting like, a, so like in Scott Fish, like I started a Johnny Smith over, you know, like Dion Lewis. Like I don't want to start Dion Lewis. No. No, that's true. Yeah, they should start making. Uh, I don't know. He, 
Yeah, he's got that worked out pretty good for, for the tight ends. But you can't overdo it. And it's a balancing act with the Scott Fishbowl. You seem to have it right. Uh, I'd like to pass along that uh, oh, Kevin yeah, is number 18. He's killing it. Number 18. I, scored, I think I scored 260 this week, so I should be up. Ooh, hear that, everybody. Yeah, um, so stay tuned to Kevin's oh, advice. I scored, I scored 280. Three. That's pretty good. Well, I had I had Christian Kirk. So yeah, I haven't and even checked. I might even have my first win of the season. <laughs> oh yeah, I looked at your team the other day. No offense, but it's it's yeah, it's not <laughs> great. It's really not pretty. Yeah. I mean, it hurts to lose Andrew Luck like week. So uh, let me see. Did I or win week zero? I won. I got my first win. I got my first win in Scott Fishbowl. Yay! Yeah, yeah, I got my first win in Scott Fishbowl. Okay. Anyways, back onto the games. Uh. Yeah, the Lions at Bears. Lions 13, Bears 20. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky, who I believe it or not, I didn't start him in fantasy, uh, uh, this week, uh, in, in Scott Fishbowl, even though he's on my team, but, uh, he decides to throw three touchdowns, which, uh, <laughs> which, I mean, he didn't get a whole lot of yardage, but, uh, at least he's connecting with the ball. And the thing, the main thing in fantasy for this, Kev, is, Ty Johnson is trash. Let's oh, just face it. He got concussed. Let him live. I will let him live, but but up to the up to that point, it's not much. Yeah, he wasn't playing. I mean, the whole the whole backfield there, uh, him McKissick, and I think they got another guy who I don't really care about. They all suck. They all suck, and even uh, McKissick uh, was supposed to be a pass catching. Well, I don't know. It was a pretty off game for. Well, first of all, it was already known twenty four hours before, or even on the Friday. <clears throat> that Matt Stafford wasn't going to be playing. And then they make it a game-time decision, even though they knew that Matt Stafford wasn't going to be in there. And so they had Driscoll in there. But it didn't do bad, to be to be honest. He got 269 yards and a touchdown and one interception. But just the same. I mean, when you're playing fantasy and there's and all of a sudden you've got Matt Stafford and you've got your lineups all set. And then you've, I mean, there's, we're talking like six teams on buys. And you suddenly got a, you've got an hour and a half before, because usually the final... Uh, injury list comes out about an hour and a half before game time. So, I mean, it puts a lot of, it puts a lot of pressure on a team to go like, cause I mean, first of all, you gotta, for every team that you're starting Matt Stafford, likely you had Matt Stafford in for somebody else in, to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah, Matt Stafford isn't your first choice. No, he's not your first choice. You probably had Matt Stafford in there as your bye week quarterback to begin with. And then he's out. And then you gotta find somebody. Now, I'm not saying that the NFL should, do things right. But I think there should be some sort of, it should be known that, cause it was apparently it was known on Friday that he was going to be out. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a competitive advantage thing, you know, like if, I mean, I'm, there's, I'm sure there's not any tape of Jeff Driscoll or anything like that, but, um, if you give the, your, your opponent two less days to prepare for Jeff Driscoll and not Matt Stafford, I mean, technically it's a competitive advantage. Yeah. Uh, David Montgomery, uh, didn't do so well. This was, it was a bit of a down week, especially a, a good matchup like Detroit, but, uh, only 60 yards on 17 carries, uh, no, no scoring. Um, <clears throat> uh, really not much else to say about this game fantasy wise. Although, I mean, you still got, uh, I mean, Allen Robinson. Robinson still did it for you, and Taylor Gabriel scored a touchdown. So, no, it wasn't. Uh, but so there's a lot of players that you might have started. Like you, you might, you might have started uh, Taylor Gabriel if needs must in a bye week like this. But if you did, then you did, you did fairly well. There's really nothing to else to add for that one. Uh, Bill 16, uh, Browns 19, Browns get a, get a much needed win. The Browns played a little bit more competitive. And I think the big question in this game, Kev, is the, if the Kareem Hunt effect. Thoughts on Kareem Hunt and, uh, cause we've been kind of waiting for this. Um, yeah, he looked good. I mean, honestly, I mean, what it, I don't think too many people are surprised that he looked good. Uh, he was one of the more talented backs in this, in the NFL over the last two years. And I don't think it was like an Andy Reid scheme thing, or at least not 100%. So for him to come in healthy and, and contribute to, on offense, I'm not totally surprised. Um, he does offer a, a couple different things than Nick Chubb. So, um, it makes sense that they utilize him like that. I like that they were using them both in like, I think they called it like the pony backfield or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's an interesting look. It's hard to defend two of those guys out there. And I mean, I don't know how many games it's going to lead to them winning, since I don't think they deserve to win this game. But um, no. uh, it's interesting. Uh, but he did have uh, seventy four scrimmage yards, eleven fantasy half PPR fantasy points for seven receptions. So 
that's uh, that's pretty good work. So I guess Kareem Hunt. I guess he's a flex. He's a he's a weekly flex now, is he? Um, I wouldn't say weekly flex. I weekly flex consideration might be where I, I'd go with that. Um, he he is one of those backs though. It's like if something happens to the main guy, he's gonna step in and he's gonna win the lead. So if Nick Chubb gets hurt and you've got Kareem Hunt, you you pretty much got a RB one. Like st- step in, plug and play RB one. So he's valuable in that sense. Yeah, Chubb did fairly well himself. Uh, he just get his his stats up here for, <coughs> briefly. Nick Chubb. Uh. Yeah, 116 yards. He didn't get a he didn't get a score. Um, he still had 116 yards on the ground, and he had uh, two receptions himself for five yards, so 13 fantasy points. Um, it's kind of the kind of a, a little bit above the floor for him, I guess you would say, but just in 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 the range of his floor. So I think he did okay if you uh, started top. So uh, I don't think it, but it does. I mean, if it's if the utilization is what it is with Kareem Hunt, I don't think we'll see see much difference. Uh, Baker Mayfield didn't throw an interception for once. Hey, two touchdowns, uh, no interceptions. Yes, as I say. Um, but uh, the Bills did do so good on the ground. I th- I was all high on uh, on uh, Devin Singletary, but uh, yeah, he took a step back from his last two weeks uh, against Cleveland. Not a great matchup for this, but obviously not matchup proof. And we saw a little bit more of Frank Gore again. So I don't know. Um, I guess we're still staying away from the Buffalo backfield. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we were, we, we kind of jumped the gun on the Singletary hype, unfortunately. Um, he was one of my kind of favorite players going into this week. I ranked him pretty high. Um, but yeah, I mean, just a weird, again, a weird game. It feels like no one deserved to win this game. Um, I think, honestly, I think, uh, I read on Twitter that Josh Allen missed a bunch of easy dump offs to Singletary, which would have had him have a bigger game. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, Gore got the touchdown, so it's one of those things where they're always going to split. This offense is just hard to trust in general, but, um, I think every once in a while you're going to get something out of Singletary. Yeah. OB- OBJ again, uh, targeted a lot, but, uh, Five reception, fifty-seven yards. Uh, he's yeah. they bust, were forcing it to OBJ, and it just wasn't working. Uh, Tre'Davious White had five pass breakups and only allowed four catches on on the eleven targets, so uh, it just wasn't really working out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's kind of a well well known well known bust now. Everybody knows that he's the bust of the year. Um, Giants, Jets. Well, Giants and Jets, they play in the same place. So it's, uh, but, uh, Jets come away with the victory in the New York, what some were calling the toilet bowl or the least worst bowl. Um, Jets come away with the victory 34 27 over the Giants. Uh, Daniel Jones had a great game. If you started Daniel Jones, you had the, uh, second behind Lamar Jackson. You had the number two quarterback fantasy this week. Surprise, surprise, Kev. Or is it? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's definitely surprising. I, I mean, um, I projected Daniel Jones to have a pretty good week. The Jets are a really soft defense, but even I couldn't have seen uh, four touchdown passes in the number two quarterback week on the on uh, number two quarterback on the week. Um, he really seems to have good chemistry with Darius Slayton as well as Golden Tate, which is, I, I mean, I guess that's not surprising, but it's. Uh, I mean, you would assume that the offense would play worse with Evan Ingram out, but it actually seems like they're doing a little bit better without him there and using those two guys as the main target. Um, it definitely held Daniel Jones' fantasy day that Saquon Barkley literally couldn't get anything done, uh, which was concerning in its own right. But, uh, yeah, Daniel Jones had a good week. Yeah, I, I think you got to own uh, Darius Slayton. Slayton, obviously, you have to own it. I think the reason they get on so well, because they were in rookie training camp, right? They were... Uh, because they were both rookies and they they started together. They played together even before. Because don't forget, Eli was still um, training with the uh, in training camp. He was still training with the ones, and uh, Daniel Jones was still you know um, building up to where he is today. Yeah, I mean it makes a bit of sense. I mean I just Darius Slayton is such a like an unknown wide receiver prospect pro, uh, prospect to me that it's just strange that he's kind of coming out of nowhere. Uh, fifth round rookie last year uh, played out of Auburn, which is I don't know Daniel Jones Duke. There's Lane Auburn doesn't compute. Yeah, uh, but uh, they seem to uh, they have the connection, and uh, Slayton looks good. I mean, he's always he's a presence. Whenever you have a presence, that's that's always good. Um, but uh, yeah, Sam Darnold not not as good as uh, only 230 yards and one touchdown, but they uh, still won the game because well, Daniel Jones. 
uh, again, he, there's the one thing that he's not doing. I mean, he had those great numbers and everything, and he came out number two, but uh, securing the football is a major concern still. No, oh, yeah, big time. I mean, he got ripped basically twice by Jamal Adams. It, like, legitimately just punked. It was a super embarrassing play. Yeah. Um, I mean, those. that's one of those things where you can kind of curtail a little bit, like, going forward. Um, we, we've seen quarterbacks get better at protecting the ball, so hopefully that's something. Mm. Uh, surprise, surprise, Demarius Thomas, six receptions, 84 yards. <laughs> what? I don't know what to make of that, but uh, I still think Jamison Carter's the better own if I had to choose between the two, but I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, it's, this is a kind of an odd game. This is, I don't, I really, really consider this, I don't know, this kind of game, the way it was, two teams that are out of it. There's really no, um, I kind of thought both teams would let it all hang out. So it's probably just, um, there's a lot more show in this than, than actual putting it together for, uh, for the next year. I think this was kind of like, let's go out there and just have fun type of game. Yeah, I mean, it's like a no harm, no foul. If you lose, you get a better draft pick. If you win, you beat your in-state rival. So, whoop they do yeah. uh, Okay, let's move along to um, Kansas City and uh, Tennessee. Um, Tennessee blocked field goal at the last on the last play to prevent overtime. It's actually quite a thrilling ending. 35-32, really fantastic game. Mahomes back in the saddle, uh, 446 yards. No surprise, he routinely can go over 400 yards. We know that. Three three touchdowns. Um, I think the strange thing about this game, which I still can't put my finger on, and I wanted to ask you about this. Um, the healthy scratch of LaShawn McCoy, I don't understand it, Kev. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it came kind of out of the blue. Like, he hadn't been playing, um, he hadn't been playing a lot of snaps the last two weeks, so it was kind of, I mean, I wasn't shocked, per se, but um, you know, it was just, it was such an extreme move, that's what was shocking. I was expecting him to play, like, a handful of snaps only, but for him to be declared inactive, that was strange. But uh, Andy Reid actually came out and said that the reason he did that was because, here, I've got the quote, LaShawn's not getting any younger, so it's important I manage him the right way as we go. So, like, I guess he's saying that he made the, uh, he did the NBA thing. He's load managing LaShawn. Yeah, uh, that's what it sounds like. But I also thought that perhaps he wants to start working in some of the backs the backfield a little more because Daryl Williams has shown some spark and uh, Darwin Thompson is still an unknown quantity. He thought that they went, but nope, it was all Damian Williams. But Damian Williams uh, committed a fumble that actually cost the Chiefs a touchdown, which probably turned the game. So I don't know what they're going to be doing now. Uh, for their Yeah, it's, um, I mean, we saw LaShawn basically get benched for fumbling. So it'll be interesting to see if the same thing happened to uh, uh, Damian Williams. I tend to think it won't. I think the drive right after he fumbled they went right back to him so uh, kind of just one of those things i think he'll bounce back like he uh i read that he was really distraught in the locker room because basically i'm not saying he cost them the game but he did give them basically three seven points so yeah uh, i think he'll bounce back i think it'll be okay it's gonna be a weird timeshare going forward i still I, I if i had to rank them it would still be damien number one for me i think daryl by default just because sean mccoy was freaking inactive uh then you got shady and darwin yeah uh nice to see travis kelsey back on uh back on the map in his usual form uh 75 receiving yards on seven seven targets seven receptions caught them all and a touchdown it's what you want from that's a, that's your standard travis kelsey day nice to see that back uh yeah tight end one it's, yep. uh, it's pretty much undisputable now with kittle going down with, <coughs> yeah. um what was the other dude Ertz not being as good uh kelsey stands alone yep kelsey's uh kelsey back uh Back where he should be. A bit of a down week of the previous week, so he needs to see him back. But Derrick Henry, whew, 188 yards, two touchdowns. He's the real deal, Kev. He's, I don't know why they wasted so many. I think they wasted two seasons without putting uh, Derrick Henry in there. I mean, he's proven yeah, it. I, I don't know necessarily if, like, they were wasting it or he just did not, like, he didn't have it yet. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I, I, like, I hesitate to believe that um, they just had him and he was that talented and he was good to go and they just didn't really utilize him. I, I tend to think like maybe he had like some kind of awakening that made him a better player. Well, I still, I still consider he's, he's really a non, I don't know if anybody plays standard leagues, but I mean, he's probably one of the better just playing standard uh, running backs because he doesn't catch a lot of passes, right? So 
Um, mm. He did the first week, but got one reception for seventy five yards. But I mean, apart from that, he doesn't he doesn't catch the ball a lot, but he gets the ground yardage. I mean, twenty three carries is a bit of a high for him. But uh, I I actually my bad start in this game was uh, AJ Brown. I thought this would be a good AJ Brown game since the Chiefs. But yeah, we, I did. I screamed. Yeah, kind of had to. Uh, next game, uh, Dolphins sixteen at Indianapolis. Miami's on <laughs> Miami's on a winning streak. Believe it. Two games straight. Um, don't know what to make of that, but it is what it is. The Colts a bit of an embarrassment, especially to lose to Miami at home. That's pretty bad. Yeah, uh, I mean, you got to give the the Colts a little bit of credit. They're playing with their third string running back, uh, quarterback. So yeah, yeah, not not great. But I think the the thing that we wanted to see in this game was because uh, we got the the most. Well, what is it? The how how many times have we had to evaluate Kalen Bellage? And here we get one more <laughs> one more look at Kalen Bellage, and it's. The same as it ever was. Yeah, I mean, he had a very typical Kalen Bellage stat line, like basically exact respect. Well, I wanted um, to see more of Miles Gaskin. Yeah, so did most of us. I mean, uh, Bellage is off, man. 20, 20 rushing attempts for 43 yards, caught four passes for two yards. This guy's off. Yeah, uh, not, well, you know, I think that there was always the hope, but uh, eh, if we kind of knew that this. But now that he's he's got the backfield out with Walton gone, we thought, okay, we're gonna get our full look at Kalen Bellage, and uh, I think it's I think it's done and dust is signed and sealed that uh, Kalen Bellage is. I don't know if he'll make a fifty three roster next year. I definitely don't think he'll make the the Dolphins or anybody else. I think he'll be. I think he'll be looking for someone to sign with next year. Uh, um, not really much else in the uh, uh, in the receiving the receiving game. Um, uh, pr- pretty uh, pretty pretty low scoring, so not much else. Yeah, uh, I mean, the game was awful in general. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so hopefully J- Jacoby Brissett is is back for next week because they really needed him. Uh, they dropped to five and four. Bad. Bad for Indianapolis, and they're still in the hunt. Uh, interesting game. Uh, not interesting if you own Cooper Cup, but uh, Rams 12 at uh, Steelers 17. Um, defensive battle. A good defensive battle. Kind of like kind of like what we saw on Monday night. Uh, it was quite an engaging game, um, if you like defense. But uh, it seemed like the Steelers had uh, managed to uh, keep the rushing game down and... Uh, Gurley, Gurley, 73 yards on 12 carries. Not bad, but he wasn't effective, uh, really, with any of those carries. And Goff, <coughs> Goff is just, just, Goff just couldn't get anything done. Um, two interceptions, no touchdowns. Uh, the Steelers' defense were all over him. And Cooper Cup, uh, four, four targets, and he didn't catch a single one. People were pretty, uh, pissed off about that. Yeah, it was an, an ugly game. Um, I mean, Pittsburgh D is legitimate. Uh, I mean, that's one thing that one takeaway from this. Uh, their offense really didn't do too much. Mason Rudolph didn't throw, he didn't turn the ball over. So, um, that was enough to win the game. Honestly, their defense put up more points, I think, than their, than their actual offense. The Rams, meanwhile, just, they just terrible. Like, I don't know what's going on. They, Goff is just, he's the new, like, he's an extreme version of Drew Brees, where it's, he's absolutely dreadful on the road and pretty good at home. Uh, Gurley just doesn't look like the same guy. Uh, Cup got shut out, and they really missed Brandon Cook's speed on the edge. It was just a weird game overall for the Rams. On top of that, they did some, like, weird play calling. Like, they had that third down where they brought in, brought in Blake Bortles and then followed that up with a preposterously bad fake punt. Well, uh, Goff had to go. Uh, yeah, Goff, Goff had to come out for a couple of plays because he was hurt. Right, but then uh, to follow that up with the fake punt on your own 30 is just... Yeah, and it ended up as a... As an INT, pretty bad. Yeah, yeah of course it. I mean, what, what do you <laughs> against that defense, yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's unsurprisingly. Well, it was a special teams, but but they generally have the same defenders. <clears throat> um, Gerald Everett uh, definitely looks the part for um, when uh, Jared Goff plays check down Charlie. Gerald Everett is the guy. Eight receptions, sixty-eight yards, not bad. Um, but uh, I don't know. A couple of a couple of no shows. Uh, Deontay Johnson and uh, Juju Smith-Schuster 
the two guys you kind of expect to be uh, at the forefront just uh and eh, not not very good um 39 yeah, 39 uh, yards for for uh pardon me not 39 i got the wrong guy here uh, where is juju ah oh, there he is uh juju had uh 44 yards <laughs> yeah i mean oh boy were we wrong about juju this year um i there's i saw a lot of people bet on him i mean a lot of it is based on the fact that ben rollersberger got hurt Yes. People are somehow forgetting that when they're, you know, trashing Juju. But he's had a really disappointing season. I, I mean, I believe in the talent. I'd still love to own him in Dynasty or whatever. Next season, I'll still be drafting him high, if, especially if Ben comes back. Yeah. But it's a rough season for him, and I don't think you can really count on any of the Steelers receivers. Yeah, Deontay Johnson, um, 64 yards, uh, uh, no scores, four receptions. Um, it didn't, it, he was compl- almost invisible in the second half, but, uh, but that's that's the way it's going to be with uh, Mason Rudolph. I think you're just going to have to accept it. Uh, he he went to his uh, go-to guy that he played with in college, James Washington. Uh, next game, really uh, snowy weather was really I like snow game, but uh, the uh, Panthers at Packers, uh, pretty exciting game. Um, lots of lots of rushing and uh, the snow kept building up. You know, uh, minute by minute, it got I don't know the the tension of the game and the came down to the wire with uh christian mccaffrey trying to get it in at the at the dying seconds and just to put it into overtime well for the for a chance for a two-point convert did they didn't get it thrilling thrilling finish uh in in green bay um and decent fantasy points uh um Devontae adams uh seven receptions 118 yards They're pretty good and dj moore nine for 120 neither player got touchdowns but they uh definitely filled up the sheet yeah this was a, a fun game to watch like you said i'm a big fan of snow games um the running backs were killing it uh, mccaffrey had 108 and a touchdown on the ground i don't know what he did receiving but probably something pretty good aaron jones 93 yards three touchdowns the guy's just a touchdown scoring machine um he is kind of taking away from aaron Rodgers' fantasy value though uh, Rodgers has sneakily been pretty mediocre over the last couple weeks um i know you as a packers fan probably know that better than most but yeah uh outside of that week uh seven game against oakland where he threw for five touchdowns and then he followed that up with kc 27 but his last two games 161 uh yards one touchdown and then this game 233 yards no touches 10 points fantasy he's had four other games this season under 14 points so uh i don't know what do you what do you think about rogers going forward i mean obviously the upside is there but um he's qb6 on the season but if there was some kind of consistency ranking i'm not sure he'd be very high well aaron jones is a bit of a touch on hog right i mean uh aaron jones i think they were saying in the game that these the the two running backs in this game are the are the two leaders in touchdowns which uh if you own if you own these players you're doing pretty good cuz they they like scoring touchdowns and they're both touchdown hogs so it's always good to have touchdown hogs on your team yeah i think i i saw a stat that those two combined for 28 touchdowns so far this season yeah. which is more than like a third of the nfl team yeah it's harsh uh but as for as for your original question aaron rodgers yeah it's uh I think you're going to have to expect that, especially in a game like where in games where the ball is hard to handle is, um, and close to the goal line, you know, he's got good running backs who can run it in. And if they do run it in, um, they're going to do it. And it's just, I think Rogers just, I'll just get the ball down there and, uh, let the guys run it in. So uh, Rogers doesn't care. Rogers, all the only thing Rogers wants is win right now. Rogers, Rogers goal. His goal is to get to Super Bowl. He doesn't care how he gets there. He just wants in it and he wants to win it he wants another super so if he has to use uh running his running backs to get there he'll do it he'll pass or whatever he has to but i'm um i think he'll have better days but uh, uh <clears throat> i don't know if he's a god it's hard to see it's hard to sit aaron Rodgers, but anyway but no, uh, i don't think you sit but it's a conversation you have to have yeah like it, if i let's say for example i've got aaron Rodgers and kyler murray uh, I've got to take a look every week. I would rather, I think on most weeks, or I think that Kyler Murray would be the better go, better guy to go with. Yeah, it's a conversation. Yeah. Uh, Kyle <laughs> Allen with his first 300 yard game of his career. Uh, one interception, one touchdown. He did fairly well. Um, so, uh, uh, 43 attempts. He was throwing it, he was throwing it quite a bit. Apparently getting Cam out of that. Yeah. Um, oh, and speaking of Cam Newton, Kev, uh, predictions where he goes next. Any bold predictions? Um, I mean, I still think that the Panthers would be kind of, but 
I could see him in uh, Chicago. I could see him. I can see him in Washington. I can't really see him in Washington. I know they want to develop Haskins, but I just don't see Haskins being the guy. I don't think Haskins has it. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's fair. I mean, I just don't know if I see him there. Like, I can't picture him in a Redskins. But then again, I'm used to him in the Panthers. Let me see. Who else? Let me look at the team. Who do you think? Do you think Redskins? Yeah, that's the team I think. I think he'll end up on the Redskins. That's my bold prediction. Redskins for him. What if, uh, I mean, the best case scenario for me is if a quarterback is surprised retired someone like a Ben Roethlisberger I mean obviously I don't want him to be a stealer because he and I have to play him twice a year but uh, <laughs> him to go into that situation or if he goes into like the Chargers situation uh, I don't you know, think something like that. I, I don't think Cam Newton's got Cam Newton is a wheels quarterback and he doesn't got the wheels I think that's one of one of his strengths is I mean, his... would you? I would love to see him in Tampa with Barry. Uh, you put hmm. Cam Newton out there with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard. Like that's a that's interesting, a problem. Interesting, he's, interesting. I mean, he's he's a direct upgrade over James, right? He's everything James is, except you know, not as turnover worth pro. Yeah, uh, that's. Yeah, I don't he's know. A, I, I, he's a Florida guy. Um, Arians is. I'm sure Arians would love to work with the arm talent. I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. I've talked myself possible. into it. Yeah, I like him in Tampa. He could end up in place like he could. He could end up in Tennessee. I could see. Uh, I can't really see him in Tennessee. I think. I think they'll probably get, run it back with Tannehill. Tannehill's look good for them. Oh, stick with Tannehill, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, they'll probably give Tannehill like a two year or something deal, something like that. And then uh, <laughs> they'll move. Uh, Mariota be back up somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah, I mean, so I guess my top three would be Tampa. I actually really like that now. I've talked myself into it. Tampa, uh, the Bears, and then um, oh, I don't know. I guess uh, I say Tampa, the Bears, and then I guess I mean by default I could still see him in Carolina. Yeah. Well, that'd be funny if he ended up in a place like Denver. Mm, that'd be interesting, but I don't. <laughs> I don't really see it working. No, I don't know. I well, I don't know. Did you see Flacco working? I yeah. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Okay, let's not. We'll move on to uh, Minnesota twenty-eight at uh, over Dallas twenty-four. Um, <laughs> Dallas kind of fell flat in this game. Um, it was the Dalvin Cook versus Ezekiel Elliott. Richard, Richard, Richard. How many years have we been doing this this pod? Like three now, right? Oh, three or four, yeah. Three or four. I think this is my. I would say at least my seventh time saying that Jason Garrett needs fire. Yeah, he needs. Like, to be I don't. Fun. He. I don't know what the hell he. Like, I, it's crazy. Like he, this team is so talented, you can't be losing games because of I don't know politics. I, like, what is the point of having Dak march right down the field and then you know in scoring territory, handing the ball off to Zeke, who's been ineffective all game? That doesn't make any sense. No, it, it doesn't. Uh... It it doesn't make sense. I I don't know what uh, I don't know their thinking on it. I mean the it's funny. I've seen a lot of games like this where um, Minnesota uh, like the way they controlled the game like at the end and then and then and Dallas had no chance to come back. They just basically uh, ran out the clock on them. I thought saw a lot of bad clock management by Dallas and just I don't know. You you're right. It's there's something wrong with uh, the play calling and. Uh, Everything, but um, there's one bright spot, and that's uh, they acquired Amari Cooper, and uh, I'm fully convinced that Amari Cooper's if he stayed in Oakland, his his career would be dead. His his career is alive now. Yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> it's it's actually shocking how much better he is with the Cowboys than he was, with, and I I have no explanation for it. Like I, Derek Carr is proven to be adequate. Uh, but for him to not be able, I think the biggest knock against Derek Carr is the fact that he couldn't get it to work with him. Because mm-hmm. Mark Cooper is out there running his routes, and he is he is so talented. He makes every catch. He runs every route. Uh, the toe <laughs> the toe drags on the sideline are ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Cooper is just so talented. The fact that he like if you're a quarterback, you can't make it work with someone like that. That says more about you than the wide receiver. Yeah, and another thing too, like, and this goes to the um, the Cowboys should be a hell of a lot better than they are because Randall Cobb is a huge addition to this team, uh, and and to see the Cowboys with, I mean, I saw Ro- Aaron Rodgers uh, would would love to have Randall Cobb back on it, uh, and I saw that. I saw them how how he sort of he sort of misses Randall Cobb when they were playing the the Cowboys uh, a few weeks back. Uh, yeah, he misses his butt because Cobb was Cobb's a good player, and 
I don't know how effective he'd be on the Packers now. Uh, things have kind of gotten a bit shuffly with the uh, with the receivers now. So and and what with the running the the running backs, but but you're right. Uh, the Cowboys, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think Garrett's on the block. Uh, come on. so well, the, not the block, the hot seat, I guess is what we call it. So yeah, I don't know. I, it seems like he's never on the hot seat. So no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But if they make the playoffs and they win a playoff game and they get you know, if they get to the NFC Championship, he'll be all the toast of the town again. So, but uh, a lot of a lot of people say that it's because um, the Cowboys haven't won anything since Landry's died. So it's almost like because the way Jerry Jones pushed out Tom Landry, he's kind of gotten revenge on. So I don't know. But one of the first things Jerry Jones did was fire Tom Landry as soon as he came in, because Landry had like big control. So he he, he completely gutted the, the the old Tech Shram Cowboys stuff. So yeah, I mean you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he's a terrible owner, but I, I think he's kind of uh, he's he's kind of got to leave general managing to uh, another person. Anyways, um, <clears throat> that's our games of the week, and uh, so we'll move along into our next segment, which is. Uh, panic button. I haven't got anything written down, but I have a guy in mind for my panic button of the week, and that is Darren Waller. Yes, Darren Waller is my panic. I'm panicking over Darren Waller for three straight games. Uh, uh, he's he, this is his uh, fantasy point totals uh, in half PPR: eight, six, and six. And even before that, it was uh, a bit spotty. I mean, he's had two 100-yard receiving games this year. Uh, one against Green Bay and one against Minnesota. But um, uh, the targets just aren't there like they were earlier in the season. Because now we've, for the last two games, uh, two targets against Detroit, five targets against the Chargers. Um, it's, it's, Kev, I think, I think we've lost Darren Waller as a, as a solid tight end. I, I would give, I would push back a little bit on that just because tight end's really bad. I mean, if you're getting six points from him, uh, you can, you can kind of settle. Like that six points is honestly like tight end eight. Tight end. Um, but yeah, I agree that like, you know, I think Jonathan and I, we talked a couple weeks ago about is Darren Waller potential for being you know, the tight end one because we saw, you know, Kelsey, uh, was dealing with Matt Moore and Ingram was hurt. Earth was bad. Kittle was underwhelming, but that's definitely out the window now. Uh, Waller is a second tier tight end for sure. I, I would say, I would agree with you kind of dropping dropping settle yeah he's dropping so i'd rather have greg olson i mean he had a that's, he had yeah, a good that's game close. that's close um greg olson has had uh well i mean he greg olson had a big game it might not always be like that i mean he had 10 10 targets which is his highest targets of the year um because this is the first time since cam newton's been out that that greg olson has gotten like a lot of targets and and uh, it's almost like uh kyle i has decided hey i found oh uh, greg olson he's pretty good i guess i could use him and he did and it worked out well they didn't win the game but uh, well with injuries like to evan ingram and that i mean i still like you say darren wall you still kind of got to stick with him right uh, we don't know about the status about Jared Cook, but you know, but all these tight ends are just mm, yuck. A lot of yucks out there, has to be said. Uh, but anyways, have you got a panic button? Uh, yeah. So the guy I'm panicking on, maybe it's unfair. It's his first game back from injury, but David Johnson uh missed the previous two games. Came back for Tampa, played 43 snaps, had six touches and a total of 10 yards. Uh, lost a fumble, got benched for Kenyon Drake. Um, it's not looking great. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh yeah. he's got SF next week, then a bye. Um, then the Rams, uh, Steelers, Browns, Seahawks. I don't really see it picking up too much for him, especially if he's still kind of uh, ginger with the injury. Then, you know, Kenyon Drake seems to be a really good, important part of I mean, he's really carved himself out at role. Um, so yeah. I don't know. David Johnson for sure is not the top six, seven running back that he was for the first half of the season based solely on volume. Um, and he's, I, it doesn't seem like he can get that kind of volume. I don't know if he put up. No. And, uh, he is definitely in the, he's really, uh, he's well inside dra- uh, bus territory, especially where you drafted him, which was uh, late first round, early second round. Um, maybe, maybe even mid, uh, maybe even mid first round, like some people, um, I was avoiding, yeah, I, mean, I, I think he went around tight end, or I think he went around pick number six, seven in my draft. Yeah. So, hmm. I think right now, uh, 
Melvin Gordon's looking like a guy that's. Uh, but well, I guess that's <clears throat> that's for the that's for my next uh, next guy. I guess um, I guess my other uh, uh, panic button choice has to go to. Uh, uh, I, I didn't I didn't really have uh, much preparation because I've already mentioned. There's so many guys that I've already mentioned as uh, as choices, but I'll I'll find somebody here that I've that, that will come to mind. Sure, uh, why don't I just, uh, I'll, I'll step in in the meantime. Okay. Uh, my my second panic button is Jared Goff. Um, mm. Yep, yeah, right before the bye, two good weeks, uh, 47, 49 total points against at Atlanta and then home for Cincy. So, I mean, take whatever into stock where you want. But this last game against Pittsburgh was just pathetic. Uh, 0. 0.72 fantasy point. Um, yeah, he just looked jumpy in the pocket. The offensive line is really bad. He's not getting any support from Todd Gurley. The weapons are dropping. Like Cooks is probably done for season. Then the next couple weeks, you've got uh, home versus Chicago, home versus Baltimore, at Arizona, where you can play him in week 13 then versus seattle at dallas and at sf so you've got maybe two playable weeks in there and you for sure can't play them during the fantasy playoffs so Goff is someone that not only am i panicking on um i mean he's the qb 16 for the season so this is kind of cheating but uh he's he's droppable for me i don't think he should really roster except maybe for that week 13 yeah no that's the, he's a pretty good choice i guess the guy that uh you should have dropped by now and you should drop him for sure now is Marquez Valdez Scantling? I think it's over. Uh, I think um, I think Lazard has taken over uh, that role. Just, uh, here's here's Marquez Valdez Scantling over the last three weeks. Uh, fantasy point wise, one zero and zero. Before that, I mean, at Oakland he had 133 yards uh, when when the Raiders visited Green Bay. But at Kansas City, one reception, four yards, and he's had three targets against the Chargers in Carolina since. It's one zero and zero. So Mark. I think it's time to uh, call it quits on uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Yeah, I mean, I think that just goes back to what we said earlier about Rodgers and Aaron Jones. That offense is, is skewing a little bit more towards the run, so the upside isn't there for Marquez Valdez-Scantling, especially with the run they have back and forth. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, moving on up, something a little more positive, which is, uh, which is always... Uh, <clears throat> This is always nice. Um, uh, yeah, moving on up. Uh, there is something moving on up, and that's a guy we already mentioned. That's Jacob Hollister of the uh, Seahawks. Um, now, again, you won't be able to play him next week, but uh, already mentioned him, but uh, he's definitely one of my moving up guys. Moving up guys. In, in such a thin, tight end uh, period as we're in now, yeah, go grab him. Hold him for until next week when the uh, Packer, when the uh, Seahawks are back, and, uh, and you'll have yourself a, a half decent tight end in place of Will Dis- of the injured Will Disley. Yeah, I mean it's not a move I hate, and we're getting desperate at tight end. Moving on up, Kev. Uh, yeah, so my move on up is uh, Brian Hill, running back for the Falcons. Um, uh, we mentioned a little bit the Falcons were actually surprisingly able to run on the safe lot kept them in the game. He took 20 carries for 61 yards and also caught a touchdown. So with Edo Smith missing time. Devontae Freeman looks like he's going to miss time. You probably absolutely have to go pick up Brian Hill if you need any kind of left back. Well, yeah, Brian Hill, he had a good <laughs> game. Pretty, a pretty good, uh, solid game. Um... <clears throat> Uh, the other guy moving on up is uh, a guy we already mentioned before uh, highly is uh, um, <clears throat> Darius Slayton. Uh, already mentioned him uh, with regards to the, the Giants game. It's obviously there's a chemistry between him and Daniel Jones. Um, he's a guy that should be on a roster. I had him on the roster, but um, he's going to have, I think he's kind of matchup based. Obviously, uh, he's not at the stage as you as an every week starter, but uh, he's definitely a guy you should have on your roster right now. He's moving on up. Well, Kevin had to uh, leave us uh, suddenly, so uh, we'll wrap up the show. Uh, his last um, moving on up guy was Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry of uh, Cleveland Browns. So um, Jonathan Chan will be back with us next next week, hopefully, and uh, and Kevin Ho will be uh, hopefully without our technical little bit of a technical difficulty at the end, but. Uh, uh, so for Kevin Wool, I am Richard Seville, Fantasy Six Pack Dot Join us again next week on the Fantasy Edge. Have a good week, eleven, everyone, and take care.